Okay, today I want to talk about HTML and CSS as it pertains to field sets and legends within forms. So I've got a basic form here. I just did a simple little grid, just a quick layout. So I've got all my labels here. I've got all my form fields, my inputs, selects, buttons. They're nicely lined up, nice even spacing between them. And that's what the CSS is doing here. I don't want to spend a lot of time going through that. If you want a copy of the finished code, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the code gist that has everything that I'm doing in this video. All right, so what is a field set and what is a legend? Well, in my form here, you can see I've got some divs that I create, and this is just sort of something I've done for uh, decades. <laughs> um, when building a form, we put elements around them. So each pair, the label and the input, or the label and the select, I put a little containing element around that. Makes it really easy to style and really easy to organize the content. You can always sort of keep these things grouped together. Now, this isn't the only way to do it. Um, you can use the label as the containing element, and there's lots of other ways that we can do this. This is just the way I've always worked with it, so I've got sort of a, a routine that I follow with it. Okay, now the field set is when you want to group things together within your form, I mean, you can draw a line around your entire form. You can use a border to do that. We have a form element in our HTML. Let me zoom in a little bit here, make it easier to see. Um, we have the form element itself, so that could get a border. But within the form, let's say I wanted to take these two parts and these two parts and visually group them somehow. Well, that's what the field set is for. It's to allow you to group things. Now you can add radio buttons or check boxes on to sort of enable and disable different parts of a form as well. But let's just start with the visual part. So I'm going to add a field set tag here. And I'm going to put it around these two that I've highlighted here. As you can see, there's the famous person. Here's the favorite characters. Those two fields, I save it. And then this is what I get. It's just like putting a border around things, but it's for the explicit purpose of grouping form elements together. Now, I haven't really done anything special with this to the layout. I've already got on my divs that are around these things, there's a little bit of margin and padding to keep them away from the edges, but this is the field set. Now the legend, this is going to be the label that we attach to that field set. There's an automatic connection between these two things. So let's say I, I'm going to call this the purple team, purple group. That's just the label that I'm using. And by default, on my page, I've got all padding and margin turned off. And that was up here in my default styles at the top. I'm clearing out all padding and margin. I've set box sizing to border box. And those are my defaults for every element on the page. And that way, I know that if there is padding, if there is margin, then it's going to be because I chose to put it there. And we can see here the legend is right against the edge of the field set. There's no space here. So let's talk about shifting this over or the content. If you wanted to shift the content inside of here, we could do something like that. So in my CSS, let's start off with the field set. And I'm going to put some padding on the left hand side. I'm just going to arbitrarily choose 8 REM. And you can see I'm pushing this in to sort of offset it and create this gap so that somebody can see visually that this is different. This is grouped differently than the rest of the form. If I kept it with the same margins, the eye is still going to want to scan straight down that line. Now, because I put this on the padding, uh, the padding on the field set, it means that I'm pushing this legend over as well, because the legend is one of the elements inside a field set. So if we want to push it back over, now we could give, um, there's a few different ways to approach it, but what I'm going to do here is with my field set legend. So on my legend, I'm going to actually undo some of that by using a negative margin. So my margin left is going to be negative 6 REM. And you can see that pulls it back over towards this side. So what I've got left is the 2 REM. 
right here. Let's put a second field set so we can compare the two of them as we work on it. Okay, that's the first one, and then we'll add the class onto the second one here. We're just going to put the class in here um, so we can target them a little bit easier. Not purples, purple. All right, back up in here. There we go. Now, if I want to change the color of these lines around them, the field set, this is actually the border color. So we'll use Rebecca purple. Now, this is now a blue color on that border, and this is a purple here. I don't know well how well you can see that on the videos, but they are different, two different colors. And I'm also going to add a default color for this. So this is the text color for the field set. And there we go. Now, because I've set the color, on the field set, that actually carries down to the legend. Now, it's not affecting anything down in here, but it is affecting the legend by default. If you want to, you can carry that down by using color, and then there's the keyword current color as well, which has the same effect of taking the color of the parent and bringing it down. Whatever is set just outside of it, that's the color that's going to be used for that legend. All right, now, keeping these lines away from the edges, because you never want to have text that's really touching a border or some sort of line on your page. Um, it makes it a little bit harder to read. It just, it's a, it's a slight mental uh, difference in the amount of time it takes someone to focus on and read the text if you've got text touching a line. So we're going to go into our legend again and padding is what we actually use. Now, I don't need anything on the top and the bottom, but on the left and right, I'm going to add one REM of padding. And there we go. Now you can see the margin is what's moving us away from this line right here, and the padding keeps the text away from that. So we're using the same sort of gap that we're using everywhere else, that one REM. That's our 20 pixel gap that we're using everywhere. Okay, and I'm going to also just put some defaults in here just to make sure it's um, being sized the way I want. One REM, which is our default that we're going to have anyway. But I want the line height. As I was saying before, I didn't put in padding on the top or bottom. I just want to have that line height of one. So there's no extra space above and below the legend. Now, these are sitting way too close together we do want to create a gap between those. We do want to create a gap between all the different field sets. Our default here, padding left 8 REM, that's great, that's the space that pushed it all in, but I need a margin, and let's put one REM on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. There we go, now we're creating that gap. So same sort of gap that we're creating in here, we're gonna create here. Now this is a little bit larger than this one, this is a little bit larger than this. This is the two REMs. This is one REM. I don't need as big a space because it is part of the form, but I do want to keep these two things grouped together inside of here. So this gap, we can make it a little bit smaller if we want, but this one is smaller. Okay. So that's our field set. We've got our legend. Now, other things that we can do to kind of group these together, uh, there's other little visual effects that we could do. Um, one little fun thing I like to do sometimes is creating a little triangle here in the corner. This is just a fun little CSS technique. If you take the before or after pseudo element and you position it in the corner here, and then you put borders on it, if it has a width and height of zero, that means it's going to be like a little dot that has no dimensions. And you add borders on all four sides of it. What you're going to end up with is like a little box that's got a cross here. So the border top is going to be a triangle. The border left is going to be a triangle. The border bottom is a triangle. And the border right is going to be a triangle. So we're going to take that idea, fill in all four sides, and then we're going to make the two borders down here transparent. 
So let's do that. For my field set, I'm going to set the position to relative to make sure that I can position that little box relative to this. So we'll say on every field set before, oh, extra, there we go. We're going to say position absolute. So whatever positioning we give it is going to be relative to that point right here. Now I do have the um, padding left here, which is pushing everything over. Um, and I've got the margin. So I've got to contend with those things when I'm positioning this. But I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so there's just our positioning. We're aiming for the top left corner, no dimensions. We're going to put the border on it. And here's the other use for that current color property. By putting it on the parent element, we are setting down here with this by having the color here, we're able to take whatever that color is and carry it down in here without having to repeat this for both of the two classes. Okay, so there we have it. Here is our top left zero. Now this legend actually creates a little bit of space right here. Without the legend, it would be even with this, but we're actually moving up a little bit because this space created by the legend lifts it up. Now, we're going to very quickly and easily change that with my top. I know that this is 1 REM, the height of this text, and the line height is set to 1. So 0.5 is going to bring it down about halfway, but this could be centered slightly differently. I'm going to use a little bit less than half. There we go, to put it in that corner. There we have it. Okay, now the transparent part. This is actually a little dot with zero dimensions and it's got the four borders on it. Let's take the bottom two here and get rid of those. So we're going to say border, bottom, color, transparent. You can see it removes that part. And then we'll do the same thing on the border right, set that to transparent, and there we have it. So my border width, that one REM, is using the same one REM as our padding that we set on the legend. So this bit right here where we pushed it off. Oh, sorry, not that. <laughs> the margin that we created right here. It was eight REM and then we pulled it back six. So there was two REM space right here. And then my triangle, it's from this point to the middle, that's 10 pixels, but we're almost double. And there we have it. We now have a field set and a legend on two different parts of our form. We've used color with current color to match up all the different parts of this, the field set, the legend, the little visual um, reference in the corner as to where our section is. And we still have everything lined up in our form. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I hope that gives you some ideas about what you can do with forms and with field sets and legends. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.